Today we will continue with the second episode of the history of outboard motors. But before I go any further I would like to invite you to use the subtitles and if necessary you can choose automatic translation to your desired language. I believe this will give many of the opportunity to get comprehensive information. In our previous episode, I talked about Johnson and in this episode I'll talk about Avinrud. To those of you who haven't seen it, please take the time to familiarize yourself with the history of Johnson outboards. I also want to thank those of you who have subscribed to the Boat Motors channel and urge those of you who haven't to do so. On April 19, 1877 all of Inrud was born in Norway. Avinrud's father emigrated to America in 1881, followed the next year by a Vinrud mother and two siblings. When Ole traveled with his mother on the ocean liner, he spent most of the time in the engine room of the ship. Arriving in America they settled in a farm close to Ripley Lake near Cambridge, Wisconsin. Ole started school, and helped his father's farm in the spare time. In third grade, he dropped out from school and began to spend most of his time at the farm and tobacco warehouse. Soon he began to repair things in the farm and a later around the neighborhood. Fascinated as a child by boat engines, he subscribed for Mechanic Magazine. In this magazine he read about the internal combustion engine, already being used in Germany experimentally to power the horseless carriage. One day when Ole was only 16 years old, he secretly took wooden material from his father's workshop and began to build a sailboat. When his father revealed that Ole spends the money he earns on a boat he got mad at him and burned everything in the wood stove. Broken but not defeated, Ole began to secretly build a new boat. He started hiding the finished pieces for the new boat around the farm until the day his father left for a week. Then Ole assembled the sailboat and launched it into the lake. On the way home his father heard the rumors about the boat and when he got home asked Ole for it. Ole confessed and led his father to the pier and showed him the boat. Impressed by his son's talent, he blessed him. Ole began ferrying tourists across the lake, earning 25 cents per trip. He saved enough money to move to Madison, where he became an apprentice machinist in the Fuller and Johnson Farm Machinery Shop. Continuing his subscription to the magazine, he was inspired for a boat with an engine and a horseless carriage. Looking for better opportunities, he changed several jobs while settling in Alice Company in Milwaukee, where he was employed as a pattern maker. Realizing the chance he has, he studied the profession in detail, which helped him achieve his dreams in the future. Then he met Arthur Davidson and they became friends. One captivated by the boats and horseless carriages, the other by the two-wheelers, they liked each other and spent the summer with Arthur's grandmother. Captivated by their dreams at that moment, Davidson builds his first motorcycle. Ole helped Davidson perfect his first carburetor. The friendship that is created helps both. Years later we can see the similarity in design and castings at Davidson and Avinrud. Returning to Wisconsin in 1900 at the age of 23, Avinrud opened a pattern-making shop. In his spare time, he built his own horseless carriages, which he road-tested in town, much to the astonishment and dismay of his fellow Milwaukeeans. Avinrud soon won fame as an engineer and eccentric. In the same year he co-founded the custom engine firm Klemek and Avinrud. In 1906 the manager of Avinrud's modest office was a young neighbor named Bess Carey. At this time, the spark of love between the two has already ignited into an engagement. During a picnic on an island that summer, Avinrud made a five-mile round trip by rowboat in 90-degree heat to fetch his beloved some ice cream. Avinrud realized one of his childhood dreams of creating an outboard motor. All the years of experience he has helped him to create his first motor. In 1907, he invented the first two-stroke practical and reliable one-and-a-half horsepower 62-pound outboard motor. Two years later Avinrud Motor Company was founded in Milwaukee. In 1911, he earned a boat motor patent and formed a business partnership with Chris Meyer who invested $5,000. By 1912, 
the firm employed 300 workers. The Avinrudes literally wore themselves out producing and promoting their motors, and in 1914 were forced to sell their business interests to Meyer for $150,000 in order to take care for his sick wife. Having promised not to manufacture outboards for five years, Avinrud toured the U.S. instead with his wife and their young son, Ralph. In the same time one of the competitor's Waterman outboard motors was purchased in 1917 from Aero Motor and Machine and production was closed. Meyer continued to produce engines under the Avinrud name. By 1919, the family had settled in New Orleans, Bess was recovered, and All and their son Ralph were working on a new engine design the Rudder Twin. In 1919 when the five years were up, the Avinrudes returned to Milwaukee. Ole who had not been idle, thought it only fair to offer Meyer his revolutionary new invention, a twin-cylinder, three-horsepower, 48-pound, aluminum outboard motor. Meyer declined, which forced Ole and Bess to form the Avinrud Elto Company into competition with the first company he had founded. In 1922 the engine received rave reviews at the New York Boat Show. The business saw immediate success, and Ralph encouraged his father to build a more powerful engine, something for more than fishing. In 1927 Ralph left college to join his father company. This helped him to learn the outboard business which he will control very soon. At the 1928 boat show, Olive Inrood unveiled an 18-horsepower motor that could take boats to 35 miles per hour. Meanwhile, Chris Meyer began developing the new design for an aluminum motor which did not flourish. In 1925, Chris Meyer decided to sell a Vinrude to Walter Zinn. With staggering losses in the first year Zinn, sold the company to August Petrie, in 1926. In the same year Coben Outboard Motors was sold to a Vinrude and the production is discontinued. With hard work, Petrie had improved the business by 1928, had it in a good position and realized it was time to sell. The eager new buyer, Briggs and Stratton, invest $400,000 into improvements. In 1929 Briggs then acquired Lockwood Outboard Motor Company and negotiated a deal with Ola Vinrud which led to a deal which included Elto, Avinrud and Lockwood, which were collectively called the Outboard Motors Corporation, OMC. The OMC logo appears over the words, Eltos, and, Avinrud. Avinrud reacquired his first company. Later that year, on October 28, the stock market crashed, and the Great Depression began. Avinrud's company survived only from sale to sale, but even in these hard times, Ole Avinrud never lost his optimism and generosity. He would shyly slip friends and employees cash to help them through hard times. Meanwhile, Avinrud and his staff had developed first electric starter outboard motor, the folding shaft, and the 40-horsepower, Big Four. In fact OMC began to expand producing, Avinrud Lawn Boy, Power Lawnmowers in 1932. In 1933, Bess Avinrud died only 48 years old. Her husband was crushed and died the next year at 57 years old. His son Ralph took over as president of OMC. At the same time depression impacted Johnson as much as it did OMC. In 1932, at the height of the Great Depression and with conditions largely unimproved, the company was placed in voluntary receivership by its current president Delabar. News of Johnson's financial troubles spread quickly among the community and Stephen Briggs began to make efforts to bring Johnson into the OMC family. Briggs purchased 80,000 of the 102,000 outstanding shares for approximately $800,000. The money for the acquisition came directly from the personal funds of Briggs and Ralph Avinrud. By November 1935, Briggs and Avinrud became the owners of the Johnson Outboard Motors Company, as well as a factory and equipment valued at $1.5 million. In its first year of operation under new management, Johnson sold 20,872 motors, making back their entire purchase price. On September 30, 1936, OMC formally brought Johnson into the company's fold. 
Ralph restructured the corporation based on the consolidated competition of its divisions. In the next episode, we will follow the development of OMC and gradually we will look at some of the most interesting outboard motors, but before we look behind the curtain of history I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to the Boat Motors channel yet to do so. Thank you for watching the video.